Greetings and welcome to a quick review on functions, parameters, and returns. We're going to go into how to do parameters first and then returns. Remembering that this isn't necessarily the best example of how to use it in code, just how to actually use it, period. So again, this is the beginning code. It'll be posted in the description below. I'll have the ending code also so you can follow along and get to this end point. Now, I've already had this set up. We have our height input, our width input, our process button, and our answer label that we'll use throughout this. Um, the on event is the process button, so go ahead and change that to process button. We are creating a variable called x, and we're setting it to the number for height and width. And if you want to, you can call this height, and you can call this width. I'm going to call it x and y for example purposes later on in this demonstration. Now we need to create our function where we're going to take the actual parameters. So to create the function with a parameter, pull the one that says function with a parameter. To call a function with a parameter, drag that over as well. We're going to call this get area. So go ahead and call both of them get area. Uh, make sure they match get area. Now we are sending two parameters. So by default it has one and by default it calls it n. And we are going to send x and y. And then in the function we are going to have two parameters. Now I'm going to call them height and this is going to be a little bit different than the ending code. Um, for purposes I'll show you in a little bit. And width. It mainly because I want to distinguish the difference between these, right? So x, it's not important that it's called x. It's important that it's the first parameter. Whatever this parameter is, it's going to become this. So that's important to understand as we go forward with this. If I called this width and this height, then this would not match, right? So when we actually use these parameters below, height's not actually height, it's the width. So again, I, I'm calling them different things because I've seen students before say, hey, I got width and height, and then I got it down here as height and width, and they think because this is width that it matches up with the width. No, it's the first parameter is the first parameter. The second parameter is the second parameter. Doesn't matter what you call them, which is why I'm calling them something different. Now let's go ahead and do our simple math. So we'll create a variable that's actually going to hold the area. So we define a variable, area, and now we do our formula, right? Our simple math. Height times width. Now we have height times width. Now I'm going to first show you how to do this with just parameters, right? Uh, again, everything everything could in this example be done in, on event, but I want to show you how this works. So let's go ahead and set text, and then the ID is the label, the answer label. The text is going to be the area. So let's say I run this, and I put a 5 here, and I put a 10 here. So height input is 5, x is 5, width input is 10, y is 10. So this is 5, and this is 10, as far as the computer is concerned at this point. And then we put 5 here, 10 here, and then this is these parameters are very, very similar to being a variable. I mean, for a lot of reasons I mean, that's exactly how they work is so I can call it I can reference reference the variable by just you know using it the parameter and with so 5 times 10 50 and it's gonna set the text of 50 so I can get area that is correct I did the math right now let's go over so that that's parameters let's go over the returns real quick so I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this off to the side for now we'll, we'll use it again and we're going to functions and we're going to do return. All right, we're going to do return and we're just going to return area. So in this case, 
50 is getting returned. And how that works is on line four, when I call get area XY, it becomes whatever is returned. So in this case, it'd be 50. Now by itself, if I go ahead and reset and run this, it's already whining about line 10. Um, I'm just gonna put a couple slashes in front of it real quick. So I'll put five here, I'll put 10 here. For a couple reasons, this is not gonna do anything. The set text isn't doing anything, but let's go ahead and get area, nothing changed because again, we just return 50, this is 50, but that doesn't mean anything. So let's go ahead and, and, and show you how this works. We're gonna grab another variable. We're gonna call it var answer, maybe. We're gonna call it var answer. And we're gonna go ahead and set it to that function call. So again, I said this was 50. So var answer equals 50. Now let's go ahead, pull this up. We're gonna show text and get rid of those slashes real quick. Set text, answer label, it's not area anymore. We're gonna use the answer. So again, I'm gonna use different numbers this time. So we're going to run this. Let's use 10 and 15 and follow the numbers. X is 10, Y is 15, I send 10 and 15, height and width are 10 and 15, 10 and 15, 150, I return 150, come back up here. This green box, the function call, is now 150. Answer is 150. This answer is 150, which means when I click get area, it breaks. Oh, I think it's uh, freaking out. So I'm gonna refresh real quick. Um, I'm not gonna go over the numbers again, but when I run this, I type in 10, I type in 15, I click get area. And as I said before, I just showed you all those numbers. It reports back to 150. Great example also too, if something freezes, it doesn't work when you click on something, it might be you just need to refresh the page for that. That is functions and parameters and returns, right? So functions with parameters returns. One last key point about this is functions don't need parameters or returns. You can have just a parameter, you can have many parameters, you can have just a return, you can only have one return. But they're not inclusive. You can have a function with parameters and a return, but just because you have a return, you don't need parameters. So it's important to understand that of all the combinations, it's not required to have anything, right? Functions don't need parameters and returns. If you have parameters, you don't need a return. If you have a return, you don't need parameters, but you can have all of them if you want. You can have functions with parameters and returns. Key is though, you can have many, many, many parameters. And in this case, I have two parameters, but you only ever have one return. If you wanna return more than more information, you can return a list. So that's all I have for you. Hopefully this was helpful. Again, the video has the beginning and the ending code for you to follow along.